I request you all to please make way for the ambassador, His Excellency Shri Sibi George. Good morning, everyone, and a very happy Republic Day. We are gathered here today to celebrate the 74th Republic Day of our great nation, India. It is a day to honor the sacrifices of our freedom fighters and to celebrate the glorious achievements of our great Republic. We begin this ceremony by requesting Ambassador His Excellency Sri Sibi George to unfurl the flag followed by the national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, I now request you to kindly step inside the ch Chancery and join us for the program. Inside the Chancery and...
I would now like to invite the ambassador, His Excellency Sri Sibi George, to kindly read the Honorable President's message to the nation, followed by the ambassador's own remarks. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy Republic Day. Jai Hind. I will read out the address to the nation by Honorable President of India on the eve of the 74th Republic Day. Pyare Deshavasyo. Namaskar. Chautarve Ganatantra Divaski Purva Santhyapar. देश और विदेश में रहने वाले आप सभी भारत के लोगों को मैं हार्दिक बधाई देती हूं डियर फेलो सिटीजंस नमस्कार ऑन द ईव ऑफ द 74th रिपब्लिक डे आई एक्सटेंड माय ग्रीटिंग्स हार्टीएस्ट ग्रीटिंग्स टू एवरी इंडियन एट होम एंड अब्रॉड वी विल नाउ एंटर द 75th ईयर एज अ रिपब्लिक फ्रॉम द डे द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन केम इनटू इफेक्ट to the present day it has been an amazing journey that has inspired many other nations every citizen has reason to be proud of the indian story when we celebrate the republic day we celebrate what we have achieved together as a nation india is of course home to one of the oldest living civilizations india is called the mother of democracy as a modern republic however we are young in the early years of independence we faced countless challenges and adversities very high levels of poverty and illiteracy were just two of the many ill effects of the long foreign rule yet the spirit of india was undeterred with hope and confidence we began an experiment unique in the history of humankind such a vast and diverse multitude of people coming together as one nation remains unprecedented we did so with a belief that we are after all one that for the collective wisdom of that we are all indians we have succeeded as a democratic republic because so many creeds and so many languages have not divided us they have only united us this is the essence of india that essence was at the heart of the constitution which has withstood the test of time the constitution that started governing the life of the republic was the outcome of the freedom struggle the national movement led by mahatma gandhi was as much about winning independence as about rediscovering our own ideals those decades of struggle and sacrifice helped us win freedom not only from colonial rule but also from the imposed values and narrow world views revolutionaries and reformers joined hands with visionaries and idealists to help us learn about our age old values of peace brotherhood and equality those who shaped the modern indian mind also welcomed progressive ideas from abroad following the vedic advice let noble thoughts come to us from all directions a long and profound thought process culminated in our constitution our founding document is inspired by the humanistic philosophy of the oldest living civilization in the world as well as new ideas that emerged in modern recent history the nation will always remember remain grateful to dr b r ambedkar who headed the drafting committee of the constitution and thus had a critical part in giving it the final shape on this day 
We should also remember the role of jurist B. N. Rao, who had prepared the initial draft, and other experts and officers who helped in making of the constitution. We are proud of the fact that the members of that assembly represented all regions and communities of India, and they included 15 women too. Their vision, as enshrined in the constitution, has been continuously guiding our republic. During this period, India has been transformed from a largely poor and illiterate nation into a confident nation marching on the world stage. This would not have been possible, but for the collective wisdom of the constitution makers guiding our path. While Baba Sahab Ambedkar and others gave us a map and a moral framework, the task of walking that path remains our responsibility. We have largely remained true to their expectations, and yet we realize that much remains to be done to realize Gandhiji's ideal of Sarvodaya, the upliftment of all. Yet the progress we have made on all fronts is encouraging. Dear fellow citizens, in our mission of Sarvodaya, the most encouraging has been the progress made on the economic front. Last year, India became the fifth largest economy in the world. It needs to be underlined that this achievement comes against the backdrop of high economic uncertainties around the world. The pandemic had entered the fourth year, affecting economic growth in most parts of the world. In its initial phase, COVID-19 also hurt India's economy badly. Yet, guided by our able leadership and driven by our resilience, we soon came out of the downturn and resumed the growth saga. Most sectors of the economy have shaken off the pandemic effect. India has been among the fastest growing major economies. This has been made possible by timely and proactive interventions from the government. The Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative in particular has evoked great response among people at large. There has also been sector specific incentive schemes. It is a matter of great satisfaction that those on the margins have also been included in the schemes and programs. They have been helped in tiding over difficulties. By implementing the Pradhan Mandri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana, announced in March 2020, the government ensured food security for four families at a time when the country was facing economic disruption in the wake of the unprecedented outbreak of COVID-19. Because of this help, no one had to go hungry. Keeping the welfare of poor families paramount, the duration of this scheme was extended successively, benefiting about 81 crore fellow citizens. Further extending this assistance, the government has announced that even during the year 2023, the beneficiaries will get their monthly ration free of cost. With this historic move, the government has undertaken the responsibility of caring for the weaker sections while also enabling them to benefit from economic development. With the economy on a sound footing, we have been able to begin and carry forward a series of praiseworthy initiatives. The ultimate goal is to create an environment in which all citizens can individually and collectively realize their true potential and prosper. As education builds the right foundation for this purpose, the national education policy has introduced ambitious changes. It rightly addresses the twofold aims of education as an instrument of economic and social empowerment and as a means to explore truth. The policy makes our civilizational lessons relevant for contemporary life while also preparing the learner for the 21st century changes and challenges. The national education policy appreciates the role of technology in expanding and deepening the learning process. As we have come to realize since the early days of COVID-19, technology offers life-changing possibilities. The Digital India mission is striving to make information and communication technology inclusive by bridging the rural-urban divide. More and more people in far-flung places have been reaping the benefits of the internet. 
and are receiving a variety of services provided by the government as the infrastructure expands. We have reasons to be proud of our achievements in the domain of science and technology. India has been among the handful of pioneers in space technology. As long pending reforms in this sector are underway, private enterprises are now invited to join the quest. The Gaganyayan program to carry Indian astronauts into space is under progress. This will be India's maiden human space flight. Yet, even as we reach out to the stars, we keep our feet on the ground. India's Mars mission was powered by a team of extraordinary women, and our sisters and daughters are not far behind in other areas too. Women's empowerment and gender equality are no longer mere slogans, as we have made great progress towards these ideals in recent years. With the people's participation in Beti Bachao, Beti Padhao campaign, women's representation has been rising in every sphere of activity. During my visits to various states, educational institutions, and while meeting delegations of various professionals, I am amazed by the confidence of young women. I have no doubt in my mind that they are the ones who will do most to shape tomorrow's India. What miracles cannot be achieved if this half of the population is encouraged to contribute to nation building to the best of their ability? The same vision of empowerment guides the government's approach to the marginalized communities, including the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes. In fact, the aim is not only to remove hurdles, help them and, and help them in development, but also to learn from them. Tribal communities in particular have rich lessons to offer in many areas, ranging from protecting the environment to making society more cohesive. Dear fellow citizens, as a result of a series of initiatives in recent years to transform all aspects of governance and unleash creative energies of people, the world has started to look at India with a new sense of respect. Our interventions in various world forms have started making a positive difference. The respect that India has earned on the world stage has resulted in new opportunities as well as responsibilities. This year, as you know, India holds the presidency of the G20 nations. With our motto of universal brotherhood, we stand for peace and prosperity for all. Thus, the G20 presidency is an opportunity to promote democracy and multilateralism and the right forum for shaping a better world and a better future. Under India's leadership, I am sure G20 will be able to further enhance its efforts to build a more equitable and sustainable world order. As G20 represents about two-thirds of the world population and around 85% of global GDP, it is an ideal forum to discuss and find solutions for global challenges. To my mind, global warming and climate change are the most pressing among them. Global temperatures are rising and incidents of extreme weather are increasing. We are faced with the dilemma to lift more and more people out of poverty we need economic growth, but that growth also comes from fossil fuel. Unfortunately, the poor bear the burnt of global warming more than others. Developing and popularizing alternative sources of energy is one of the solutions. <coughs> India has taken a commendable lead in this direction by giving policy push to solar energy and electric vehicles. At the global level, uh, however, emerging economics need Economies need a helping hand from advanced nations in the form of technology transfer and financial support. To maintain the balance between development and environment, we have to look at the ancient traditions with a new perspective. We need to reconsider our basic priorities. The scientific aspects of traditional life values have to be understood. We must once again rekindle that respect for nature and humility before the vast universe. Let me state here that Mahatma Gandhi was a true prophet of our times as he foresaw the calamities of indiscriminate industrialization and cautioned the world to mend its ways. 
we need to modify our lifestyle if we want our children to live happily on this fragile planet. One of the ch changes suggested pertains to food. I am happy to note that the United Nations accepted a suggestion from India and declared 2023 as the International Year of Millets. Millets were essential ingredients of our diet and they are making a comeback among sections of society. Coerced grains like millets are eco-friendly as they require less water to grow and yet they provide high levels of nutrition. If more and more people turn to millets, it will help conserve ecology and also improve health. One more year has gone by for the Republic and another year commences. It has been a time of unprecedented change. With the outbreak of the pandemic, the world had changed within a matter of days. During these three years, whether we have felt, whenever we have felt that we have finally put the virus behind, it raises its ugly head. However, there is no need to panic because we have learned in this period that our leadership, our scientists and doctors, our administrators and corona warriors will make every possible effort to meet any situation. At the same time, each of us has also learned to not let our guard down and remain alert. Dear fellow citizens, generations of people working in different fields deserve praise for their invaluable contribution in the development story of our Republic so far. I commend the roles of farmers, workers, scientists, and engineers whose combined strength enables our country to live up to the spirit of Jai Jawan, Jai Kisan, Jai Vijnan, Jai Anusandhan. I appreciate every citizen who contributes to the nation's progress. I also convey my greetings to our diaspora, the great ambassadors of Indian culture and civilization. On the occasion of Republic Day, I convey my special appreciation to our Javans who guard our borders and are ready to make any sacrifice for the country. I also express my appreciation for all the brave soldiers of paramilitary forces and police forces who provide internal security to their fellow citizens. I salute all the brave hearts of our armed forces, paramilitary forces and police forces who laid down their lives in the line of duty. I convey my blessings to all the dear children for their bright future. Once again, I extend my best wishes to all of you on this Republic Day. Aap sabhi deshe baasiyon ke liye ek baar fir me ganatandra divas ki hardik shubhakha menayam vikt karte hum. Dhanyavad. Jai Hind! Jai Hind! Jai Hind! Jai Bharat! Jai Bharat! Jai Bharat! Thank you, sir. My dear friends, dear children, friends of India, on the occasion of our Republic Day, I extend greetings to all Indians and all friends of India in Japan. Let us join our 1.4 billion brothers and sisters in India and millions of Indian diaspora abroad and billions of our friends across the world to celebrate this occasion. Dear friends, this year's Republic Day is of special significance as it comes during the 75th anniversary of India's independence, which we celebrate as Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav and which we conclude on August 15 this year. In Japan's context, 
It comes when we celebrate the 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between our two countries, which we conclude on April 28 this year. For each one of us, Indians, it is an occasion to remember and pay homage to our freedom fighters who sacrificed their lives to win us freedom and our soldiers who made the supreme sacrifice to defend our freedom and secure our borders. For our embassy here in Tokyo, this is an occasion to visualize what we propose to do in coming year. As our Rashtrapati said, our nation is witnessing a significant transformation at all fronts. Today, we are the largest democracy in the world. Today, we are the fifth largest economy in the world. With over 1.4 billion people, we are the most populous country in the world. We are one-sixth of the total population of the world. This year, we hold the presidency of G20, which is the most important plurilateral organization of our times. As our Prime Minister said, we are currently in the Amrit Kal, a journey towards a developed country by 2047, India at 100. Dear friends, in the Amrit Kal journey, our beloved motherland, in the Amrit Kal journey of our, mother, our beloved motherland, to become a developed country. It is the responsibility of <coughs> our embassy to join hands with the Indian diaspora here in Japan and work towards further strengthening our bilateral relations for the benefit of our country and our people. Today, we have an excellent relationship with Japan, a special strategic and global partnership. In recent years, our relationship, which was significantly government-to-government -government relationship, has transformed into business-to-business -business relationship and now into a strategic partnership. We are making steady progress in further strengthening this partnership. To mention one example, currently India and Japan are holding their first ever joint fighter jet exercise, Veer Guardian at Hayakuri Air Base. I acknowledge the presence here today of some of the senior Air Force officers celebrating our Republic Day. Today, India-Japan partnership within the bilateral and plurilateral framework like the Quad is key to stability and freedom in Indo-Pacific, which faces several challenges today. Our embassy has a forward-looking roadmap to further strengthen this partnership at all levels. Our relationship with Japan is a partnership not only between governments and officials. It is a partnership involving several stakeholders, business establishments, industry and commercial chambers, industry groups, science and technology establishments, universities, think tanks, academicians, scholars, media houses, artists, students, innovation and research organizations, museums, libraries, yoga and Ayurveda practitioners, and above all, our vibrant people-to-people -people contacts. I would like to recall the contributions of the vibrant Indian diaspora in Japan in building our excellent bilateral relations. In coming weeks and months, I look forward to work with each of these stakeholders to take our relationship, our special strategic and global partnership forward. Dear friends, in coming weeks and months. We will have regular high-level visits and meetings. We will continue to take steps to make Japan a key partner in our Atmanirbhar Bharat and in our treaties project, trade technology and tourism. We will continue to celebrate India in Japan as part of Azadi Ka Amad Mahotsav and our 70th anniversary celebrations. We have a lot of work to do. We will continue to promote India in Japan including our Ayurveda and our yoga. In coming weeks and months, together we will organize many events. Together we will take many initiatives. As you are aware, the embassy has in recent weeks set up three digital outreach platforms, ICN, IPN, and IBN. ICN Indian Cultural Network as a platform to highlight our cultural diversity and art forms 
and to recognize and promote the artistic skills within our diaspora and among our Japanese friends. IPN, Indian Professionals Network, as a platform to learn from the expertise and experiences of our distinguished professionals here and imbibe the best practices. Indian Business Network, as a platform to showcase India's economic and scientific transformation and to highlight the billion opportunities that India offers for business relationship. Similarly, in order to promote Indian culture and our rich literary heritage, we have launched a thematic library project. I invite you all to join these initiatives. We will celebrate all festivals of India in Japan. We will also celebrate the lives and contributions of each one of our national heroes. As Indians, we have so much to celebrate, so many national heroes to remember and pay homage to. Just to give you an idea, let me just mention how important this week is for us. On January 21st, we remembered and paid homage to Rash Bihari Bose. On January 23rd, we paid homage to Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. Tomorrow, January 27th, we will remember the contributions of Justice Radha Binod Pan. And on January 30th, we will pay homage to our father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi. Dear friends, I invite you all to join us in celebrating India in Japan. Indian Embassy in Tokyo is a home away from home for all our Indian diaspora. All are always welcome to visit the embassy. I seek your feedback and ideas to further strengthen our engagement with Japan and also contribute in our Amritkal journey to be a developed country by 2047. Let me conclude my remarks by thanking our children who have here present to sing our national anthem and also the patriotic songs. I congratulate the children who won our weekly quiz competitions. Once again, I wish you all a very happy Republic Day. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for your enlightening remarks. Now, I would like to call on stage the students of Global Indian International School to pay tributes to the rising India. Good morning to one and all. India is changing 
India is changing rapidly towards becoming one of the global powers. The changes are in terms of economy, technology, and the cultural acceptance. In this transition, we see that the traditional roots are in place and the feeling of the immense love for the country in the hearts remains unchanged. GIIS students would like to present two songs depicting the same emotion. We sincerely hope that you all can enjoy it.
I would now like to invite on stage the students of India International School in Japan to sing in praise of the spirit of India. যদি তোর ডাক শুন কেউ না তবে একলা চলো রে যদি তোর ডাক শুন কেউ না তবে একলা চলো রে তবে একলা চলো একলা চলো একলা চলো একলা চলো রে তবে একলা চলো একলা চলো একলা চলো একলা চলো রে যদি তোর ডাক শুনে Yeah. 
सब लौट ही चले ओरे ओरे ओ मगे लौट ही चले यदि राम भगवान चलने कोई गौर ना करे यदि राम भगवान चलने कोई गौर ना करे तो पत के पाने अपने लहू लोही चरण कल अकेले चलो रे तो पत के पाने अपने लहू लोही चरण कल अकेले चलो रे कार पे कोई ना आए तो अकेले चलो रे कार पे कोई ना आए तो अकेले चलो रे यदि कोई दिया ना दे ओरे ओरे ओ मगे दिया ना दे यदि बादल ना तूफानी रा तो द्वार बंद करे यदि बादल ना तूफानी रा तो द्वार बंद करे तो बचरा नल में दूर नहीं बचर आज चलाए अकेले चलो रे तो बचरा नल में दूर नहीं बचर आज चलाए अकेले चलो रे कार पे कोई ना आए तो अकेले चलो रे तेरे कार पे कोई ना आए तो अकेले चलो रे अकेले चलो अकेले चलो अकेले चलो अकेले चलो रे अकेले चलो अकेले चलो अकेले चलो अकेले चलो रे तेरे कार पे कोई ना आए तो अकेले चलो रे Tagore during the Swadeshi period of the Indian freedom movement the song became one of the key songs during the freedom fight era of India and inspired many freedom fighters including Gandhi ji thank you Vande Mataram 
वंदे मातरम तेरे पास ही मैं आ रहा हूँ अपनी बाहें खोल दे जोर से मुझको गले लगा ले मुझको फिर वो प्यार दे तू ही जिंदगी है तू ही मेरी मोहब्बत है तेरे ही पैरों में जन्नत है तू ही दिल तू जा माँ तुझे सलाम माँ तुझे सलाम अम्मा तुझे सलाम माँ तुझे सलाम बंदे मातरम बंदे मातरम बंदे मातरम बंदे मातरम बंदे मातरम बंदे मातरम वंदे मातरम वंदे मातरम वंदे मातरम वंदे मातरम वंदे मातरम वंदे मातरम thank you students we are pleased to announce that the embassy has been organizing several competitions to engage the indian diaspora and the friends of india in japan this is in order to create more awareness about the idea of india amongst the people of japan i would now like to request the ambassador his excellency shri sibi george to kindly felicitate the winners we would first call upon the winners of navy day poster making competition and essay writing competition organized on the 4th of december 2022 the winners of the poster making competitions are nitin prithvi krishna sudhendra chidrupi krishna kothari charu datta anand sane चारुदत्ता आनंद सने अकी ओगुरा and vedant amin the winners of the essay writing competition are alok mishra and achintya sundarajan
Now we would felicitate the winners of India Quiz organized by the embassy every week. Mr. Amit Gundecha. Miss Gayatri Kakarlapudi. Mr. Salva Manish Varma. Miss Arohi Singh. <laughs> Mr. Neeraj Bhandari. Miss Ramni Kaur Sidhu. Miss Pallabi Tripathi. Let's have a round of applause for the winners, please. Mr. Dipankar Bansal. Miss Iku Shoji Evans. Mr. Nirvan Singh. Miss Tivishi Goyal. Miss Sachiko Kanazawa. Mr. Biswajit Dash. and Mr. Ashutosh Singh. Uh, our heartiest congratulations to all the winners. Thank you, sir. With this, we come to the end of our Republic Day celebrations.
let us all pledge to work towards the progress of our great nation and to protect the rights and freedoms of all its citizens. Uh, I request you all to collect refreshments from the counter at the other end of the hall on your way out. Thank you.